couple of things here. We're going to be talking about registration, what classes you should sign up for. Um, some of you may be starting in summer, some of you may be starting in fall, so I'll address each of those as we kind of go. Uh, this is being recorded um, for those who can't be here uh, at this time of day. So, uh, but first and foremost, I want to thank you for choosing UTD and joining us uh, either summer or fall. Uh, and hopefully we can get your questions answered. Um, if you if you notice at the very top, there's a place where you can type questions into the chat. Um, if you raise your hand, uh, I will see it. I can call on you. So if you have questions, you're you're welcome to ask. Um, but again, I am your handy dandy program director. On here with me is uh, Penny Zhang. Penny is our finance program manager. And uh, so she's she's helping out today. So both of us uh, handle requests and emails. They go to the MS Finance mailbox and answer student questions. So um, I have a little after 11. So let's go ahead and, and we'll get started and see if we can get you guys uh, registered for your first set of classes. So without further ado, how do you go about registering and what kinds of things should you do? Well, first and foremost, you'll want to make sure you're familiar with the academic calendar. So if you don't know where that is, um, I'm going to see if Penny can type the link in here, but I can also I can also just click here, I guess. Uh, so I will the, do this. The daughter's name. I will do this. She will do this. See, I knew Penny. Penny is my handy dandy trusty um, assistant with putting links in the chat box. But you want to make sure you're familiar with the academic calendar. This has the dates for adding and dropping, um, withdrawals. All of those things tell you the deadlines by which you need to do certain activities. Uh, when certain things will incur late fees for dropping classes, how much money you can get back. So the academic calendar is something you want to be familiar with. There is one for every semester. Um, so currently the summer and the fall calendars are both available. They also tell you when we're on break. So um, those are those are handy things to know. In Galaxy and Orion, you'll want to check your enrollment date. Now advising has a section um, under registration that talks about how to check your enrollment date. Summer enrollment is pretty much uh, open. Uh, the fall enrollment, you're given dates in which you can start to enroll in your classes, and those probably are rolling out. Uh, they are rolling out this week. So you'll want to look under the um, advising area to take a peek at what they have for uh, the registration. And Penny, if you could put the link from advising's registration page in the chat, that would be very helpful. Thank you. I'm doing. I know you're. I know it takes a few minutes to get there. I'm speedier than she can type it in to, to do the search. And the search engine is working hard today because a lot of people are engaging in course lookup, uh, which is our system where you can look up the course schedules, see what's available, talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but you can also go back and look at prior semesters. So you could look at uh, the current spring semester. You could go back to last fall. Why would you want to look at what happened last fall? Well, the syllabus for this fall isn't going to be available yet, but you can pull the syllabus from last fall and get an idea of what the course content covers. Um, it also lets you look at evaluations, um, so you can go back and, and see what faculty evaluations they had for that semester. Um, so then the last thing you would want to do is you would want to plan your schedule and register for your classes. So it's important for you to be familiar with your graduate catalog. If you are starting in summer of 2022, you are under the fall 2021 graduate catalog. That is actually already posted out there. If you're starting in fall 2022, then you're going to be under the new catalog and it's not been released yet. It's usually released in the middle of the summer but there's only two changes to it. Uh, one is we added accounting 6330 to the list of accounting choices, and the other one is we added ENTP as a, as a list for the elective choices. Now, if you're starting in summer 2022 and you're interested in either of those two things, um, you just need to reach out to me. But realize that those are the degree requirements you have to meet in order to graduate. So when you say, am I ready for graduation? We go out to your graduate catalog and check against the official list. So it's important to know what your requirements are to graduate. 
there are 36 hours in your degree plan, whether you start in summer or fall, and there are three program prerequisites. Most of you will probably need professional development, which is MAS 6102, and you will take it typically in your first semester. Um, some of you may need calculus or you may need statistics. Uh, calculus is an OPRE class 6301, uh, or 6303, I apologize, and statistics is OPRE 6301. What we do is we look at your transcripts and we look for a class called calculus for the calculus waivers. Uh, statistics or econometrics for the stats waivers. So if we can identify it, and if there's a B or better, then you're typically waived from those program prerequisites. That happens in the system, and you don't really need to do anything with one exception. If we can't find your statistics course, and it's usually the stats course, you may need to let us know. This is particularly an issue if you had Math 1, Math 2, the ever popular math three and not to leave out math four because we don't know what those are. So if you had those and statistics was part of it, um, please let us know which the course it is and we can make the adjustments accordingly. So but you do need to let us know. We need to know at least a rough course description that shows that that was your stats course uh, to make that adjustment. Now, once you're past the program prerequisites, and again, for most of you, you probably only need professional development, uh, the core has 18 hours. Those classes are accounting 6305, which is accounting for managers. It's a combination of managerial and financial accounting, uh, finance, or accounting 6301, which is entirely financial accounting, Starting in the fall, you'll be able to do accounting 6330 as part of that choice, which is intermediate financial accounting. So you probably would want to have some financial accounting before doing intermediate. Um, finance 6301, which is financial management. Finance 6307, which is mathematical methods for finance, which is a finance statistics hybrid. That's why we need to make sure you have stats before you start uh, and get into that course. We encourage students to take those three core classes as early as you can because they're prerequisites for virtually everything else. So particularly the first two, the accounting and the finance 6301, uh, you'll see that those are are really encouraged as soon as you can do them. The other core can be spread out over your remaining semester. So finance 6318 is your analytics course, analytics of finance. 6352 or 53 are modeling courses, financial modeling. Uh, 52 is for valuation and 53 is for investments. And then finance 6330 is the derivatives class. The remaining 36 hours are made up of electives, so you need a minimum of 12 credits, which is typically four classes that have the prefix fin or real. The other six hours can come from other areas, so you can do fin or real for those as well. But if you wanted to pick up a business analytics class or a managerial economics class, it would fall under those other six hours. So you're limited essentially to two classes outside of FIN. Everything else should be FIN or real. So what are your typical courses? So what should you enroll for? So if you're a new student, you typically need MAS uh, 6102. I didn't list it here, uh, but you typically will pick that course. Um, and then if you're starting in the summer full time is six hours uh, and it and if you're starting part time in the fall or the spring, uh, you typically are looking at two classes and those two classes are typically the accounting class and finance 6301. So you'll want to enroll in the accounting course and FIN 6301 if you're starting in the summer. And then the accounting course and FIN 6301 if you're part time in the fall. If you are full time, it is nine credits in the long semesters, which is fall and spring. So that in the fall is going to be your accounting course. And you can see I've added that accounting uh, intermediate class in, in the list here. Um, and then the finance 6301 class and then finance 6307. Now, if you, you need to make sure you're meeting all the program prerequisites uh, first. So if you need those, those would happen before you take these. 
Um, if you have waivers, if you have transfers, that can change what this looks like. So let me chat about waivers and transfers for just a second. So waivers are undergraduate classwork. It typically takes two undergraduate classes in a particular area to waive a grad class. Waivers do not change the hours that you need. It's still 36 hours. It just changes the composition of those hours. And what it lets you do is substitute a higher level course. So for example, if I took accounting, for example, um, and I'll just say from a US institution, and I had financial accounting and intermediate financial accounting as part of that accounting degree, I could request a waiver for the first accounting course. In that case, I would replace it with another accounting course. You have to replace like with like, so I can't replace accounting with finance. I can't replace finance with marketing. It has to be like to like. Uh, the two places where this typically shows up is usually the first accounting and the first finance course, occasionally investments, which is an elective actually. Um, but the, the financial management course 6301, if you had you know, your basic business finance and then you followed it up with you know, maybe intermediate corporate finance or something like that, uh, you may qualify for a waiver and you could replace that first class with something else. You would put in the request for that waiver after you've accepted your admission to UTD uh, because it has to be processed. There's a form for this that goes through accounting, uh, goes through accounting, goes through uh, advising, and so advising puts together the package uh, to request the waiver. The other kind of change could be a transfer. Transfers are only for graduate classes. They have to have been completed within the last um, six years with a grade of B or better. It needs to be related to the degree. Uh, so if you have a master's degree in engineering, you're probably not going to have a lot of classes that would apply, uh, but they do reduce the hours that you're needed to complete. There are five tracks and I get asked a lot of questions about the tracks. So it's financial analysts, corporate finance, investment banking, which are different careers by the way, but they are um, the same courses. Real estate, FinTech and financial management. So we do have a page called the finance program resources page. And because I can probably get to that one faster than Penny can, I'm gonna go click on this. It's really talking about careers in finance in a broad scope. Um, one of the things that that does is there's some online career resources you can use. You can find out more about organizations and certificates that are related to uh, the, the field. Um, there's some things to help you pick out what track you might want. The graduate catalog has details on each of those tracks. The tracks are not on your diploma. They are not on your transcript. So if you are studying real estate and decide to take a FinTech course, no one cares. It's not a big deal. It's really up to you and your career plans. It's just the tracks are recommendations for career goals. That's what they are. From a graduation standpoint, again, it's the four classes that are FIN or real, and then the other two can be from FIN, real, or some of those other areas. So who should I ask for questions? So what courses should I take? Uh, that comes to the program director or program manager. So that's Penny and I. Uh, what is my degree? Uh, well, we can help you with that. Professional questions come to us. We cannot, in fact, enroll you. So while I can make recommendations on courses, it is actually advising that can do enrolling. So the waivers and transfers, those forms are through advising. Uh, course registration issues go through advising. Um, financial aid, scholarships, tuition, admissions, these are all their own groups. So if you have, for example, a hold from student health that's preventing you from registering, they are the only ones that can answer the questions about that hold. Uh, when it comes to visas and OPT CPT, I bow to the international office. They know those rules far better than Penny and I do. And so if you are having questions about your I-20, we may be able to answer them in a very broad way, but we will generally direct you to the iComet portal um, to submit your documents or ask those questions. 
the, the visa offices, the International Center, um, they have a lot of resources available and they just are on top of those rules and regulation changes. We do get the word, but it generally gets to us a little bit slower. Make sure when you're communicating with any of these groups, you're using your UTD email. If you don't, it is likely to get replied with, please use your UTD email and then you'll have to send it again. So you want to get in the habit of using and checking your UTD email. You are going to get a lot of email. This is a very common student complaint. So what we typically do is on Mondays, Penny sends out a message uh, for the program that talks about what's going on for the week. Sometimes it'll even give you a preview of things coming down the pike uh, later in the later in the term. Make sure you scan those, see what's going on, see what activities you want to target. We do that to try to avoid sending you email after email after email, and even then you're still going to get quite a bit. So it is it is good practice to just spend a little time and, and scan through those. So when you go through the enrollment process, you can pick up the MAS class. I listed it at the bottom, but you can pick that up at any time. But when you're enrolling them in your cart, you'll want to pick up your accounting course first and then the finance 6301 and then the finance 6307. The reason for that is the accounting course is a pre or co-requisite for finance 6301, which is a pre or co-requisite for finance 6307. So you need to put them in in order. Otherwise, it may give you some uh, naughty messages saying you can't do that. You don't have the coursework. So you will want to do them in an, exactly the order in which they're listed for the, the catalog, actually counting 6301, 6307. And, and again, the advising registration page is very useful for stepping you through the registration process. So if you're starting in the summer, what are your core courses? Well, you can go out to Coursebook and look at look them up. I did list them in the slides. We will send the slides out after this presentation, uh, but you've got your two accounting courses, one online, one is in person. I will tell you that online classes do tend to fill a bit faster, um, particularly for the core classes than um, non online classes. The reason for that is we have a robust online MBA program and MBAs take finance or not. They take finance 6301 and they do take accounting 6301. Uh, but in this case, it's accounting 6305 that is online. Um, and then you have an online class uh, or a Thursday evening class. Both of those are with Dr. Nishi. So there are two different sections for 6301. Uh, and then the only section for mathematical methods is online with Dr. Ma. But if you're starting in the summer, you are probably only going to be looking at these these top two, this accounting and this FIN 6301 for new students and of course professional development. So you can see your choice of electives. If you wanted to pick an elective in the summer is really very thin. Your choice is introduction to real estate and regulations. The reason for that is that in general, summer offerings are focused on the core and just a tiny number of electives. So if you're looking to take classes next summer, you'll want to make sure you leave core class for summer or at least look at what your elective choices are and be a little bit thoughtful about what those are going to be because next summer it'll be the same. They'll be core, but your elective choices will be limited. You can, however, look for um, courses in accounting or BUON or one of these other areas if you were looking to pick up an elective. But given that you're just starting and it's six hours for full time, I would probably focus on that accounting and FIN, FIN course. Save the electives for fall. You have a lot more choices, uh, particularly after you finish FIN 6301. So, if you're starting in the fall, these are your choices for classes. Um, the accounting ones are, are highlighted here. So and you need to try to do the delicate dance. So you know you're going to have to pick up one of these financial management sections. You'll have mathematical methods, which is either online or on Monday evenings. And then you'll also need to take a look at your accounting courses uh, and which night you want to take financial management. And there's just a ton of sections for professional development, so I didn't list them. So you'll need to pick out which accounting course you want uh, and then 
which sections of the others. And if you are just starting in fall, your choice of electives is again very limited. You have regulation, introduction to real estate, macroeconomics and financial markets, and the FinTech course. So if you wanted to pick up 12 hours instead of nine, and so typically students will take either nine or 12, uh, those would be your choices. Of course, you can pick up something from these other areas, accounting, Buon. We did add ENTP, it's not listed here, but uh, Energy, Fin, Vico, uh, MIS, and OPRE. Um, if you start in the summer, you will have more choices than this because you'll have completed FIN 6301. The problem is that FIN 6301 is a pre or co-requisite for just about everything. And in fact, the only exception to that is introduction to real estate. So you really want to make sure you take FIN 6301, you get it, you take it, you waive it, you transfer it, whatever you need to do, you wanna do that as soon as you possibly can. So what should you do after you register? While well, you're sitting around waiting for classes to start, uh, you can investigate the resources we have at UTD. Familiar, familiarize yourself with what's available at the trading lab. Uh, there are sometimes student worker positions in the lab. There are a few lab TA positions, although those will probably be filled before you start. Um, learn about the clubs, the library. Uh, start looking at internships and deciding what kind of careers you want. What skills do you need? What are potential employers? Uh, and you can build your skills. So if you've never done R, the analytics of finance class is going to use R. Maybe you spend a little time doing R. If you've never seen a financial statement in your life and you have no idea how to do accounting, maybe you get a basic accounting book and at least look at what the financial statements look like and get familiar. So there's a lot of different things you can do um, while you're waiting for classes to start. And so that's really the gist of the, the presentation. I do have an appendix. I'm going to come back to the thank you slide in a minute, but it just lists some suggested course plans and elective offerings by semester. A disclaimer here, this is historic. So this is what we have typically offered. We did have some faculty turnover from COVID, just like everybody else. And so some of these things that were typically in the fall got moved to spring and vice versa. So I can't guarantee that that's the semester that they will be offered, but it's when they've traditionally been offered um, in the past. And it's it's a pretty busy looking slide. So if you're only doing, um, and, and this is really for the long semester, so this will shift a little bit if you're doing summer. Uh, so if you're a summer start and you want something specific for you, uh, we, can, we can send that out, I'll send it with, with the, the slides when they go out. But it's set up so that you pick up an extra class to graduate in three semesters, or if you want to go a little slower, you just take this top section uh, and graduate in four. So you can see they're pretty busy slides. It's probably better to have you guys take a peek at them and with your, your feet up and take a look at what they are. Um, but I wanted to let you know that those will be attached to the slides, so you will have those available for planning purposes. So at this point, I want to just open this up to any questions you guys may have for me um, about the program, about registration. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If they're visa questions, I'm probably not going to be a big help, but I'll do what I can. So you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, you can also use the chat. That button is right next to people up at the top. Um, either of those should work. If you want to raise your hand, you can also do that piece. I know some of you may have put some classes in the cart, uh, but you may be looking to now make some shifts as far as what you have in there. So just things to think about. Yes, go ahead, uh, Aditya. Uh, hello, uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I guess uh, it's not related to the course uh, specifics. I just wanted to know some details about the housing in campus. Right, right. So there is housing on campus. Um, and I don't know if Penny will beat me to the jump on this one. Uh, we do have a number of students that live in on campus. Uh, they do have graduate housing. They also have uh, an ability to get information on off campus housing as well. Um, let me pull up. Ah, Penny is speedier than I am. 
So that's the best place to start because they can provide you guidance on what is available for graduate students. Um, you, you know, a lot of people look at where their classes are. Your classes are going to likely be in the JSON building. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Take a look at a campus map. Just realize you may have a bit of a hike. Uh, there is a good bus, bus service uh, from off campus. Um, so some students are both on and off campus for housing, but those are the best places. That's the best group to start with regarding housing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, uh, Ma'am, if I take a financial analyst job, can I take uh, two courses from uh, the uh, other track? That is, if I want to take uh, something from an investment bank to help out with finance. Okay, can you please repeat that? I think what you're asking is whether you can take courses from other areas, but I couldn't hear what areas you had in mind. Uh, can you hear me now? Am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I was asking if I take uh, my uh, financial analyst track as a main track and I select majority of the subjects from that, but if I wish to select the codes from financial analyst or corporate finance, so is it possible for me to do so? You absolutely can do that. It, there's no problem with doing that at all. In fact, um, a lot of students uh, mix and match. The financial management track, that last one, is actually just exactly that. Pick what courses you want. Um, but yes, if you're following one track and you want to pick up a class on another one, that's not a problem. You just want to make sure you have your, your four fin or real, and then the other two can be fin, real, or one of the other areas. Yeah, we have another hand up. Uh, and Disha. Thank you, Mom. Yes, can I help you? Yeah, Mom, so I'm just confirming. I need to apply for a waiver if I want to opt for intermediate financial accounting rather than the basic financial accounting. So for the intermediate financial, for the intermediate accounting class, accounting 6330, I know this is going to come as a shock. There are no prerequisites for that course. So you can just sign up for it. The only person or people that may need to do a little something would be as students starting in summer of 20 uh, this summer because it's not actually on your graduate catalog. So you have to fill out a little bit of paperwork or else when the new catalog comes out, you could change your catalog. So it's just a little bit messy if you're starting in the summer, but it's it, you shouldn't need to do anything in terms of um, there are no prerequisites for it, so you don't have to waive the accounting 6301 to take accounting 6330. I know it's odd, but that's on accounting. So, ma'am, I've already um, already opted for the financial accounting course. So, do I need to drop my class and then apply for this one? Are you summer or fall start? Oh, fall start, and I've enrolled okay. for the financial account. Yeah, so the fall starts should be able to enroll in accounting 6330 and the fight in. So the problem that you have is if you um, if you drop accounting 6301 and you sign up for accounting 6330, you should still be able to stay in your FIN 6301 and FIN 6307. So just make sure you're checking the information in Galaxy Orion that FIN 6301 still lists um, the accounting 6330. And I can try to check here in just a minute for the course listing. It should, it's supposed to from the graduate catalog. The only reason I'm pointing out that the, the hesitancy is because if it doesn't, then what happens is if you drop the accounting, it may drop you from the other courses. So you just need to be a little bit careful about that. That's a bigger problem for summer than it is for fall. So the fall should be correct relative to the schedule. Um, and if I can't look at it fast enough, Penny may be able to pull up the course description in uh, in course book for me so I can field a couple more questions. OK, oh, so uh, let me let me so yeah, go I, ahead. I was yeah, I was trying to answer some questions in the in the chat box, so I didn't notice the question between you and the student. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, that's that's OK. You, if you're handling the chat box, 
chatbot. I think I can go find this because I should have course book open. The, the question was about the accounting 6330 class, and I just want to make sure that the um, the catalog piece should have been processed, but I want to do a really quick quick check here just to make sure that that's, that's valid. So I should be under class detail. Yeah, so you shouldn't have any trouble. So if you're starting in the fall, you should be able to drop the accounting 6301 and add the accounting 6330 and you should be be good to go. Thanks a lot, Mom. Mm -hmm. So while Penny's working in the chat, I'm going to grab, uh, it looks like Harshida. Uh, yes, hi ma'am. Uh, so I'm actually looking to start the course in fall 22. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is around the fact that there is uh, there are like two types of courses that we have, right? One is flex and one is the cohort uh, section. So do we have to specifically, and I want to go in for the flex one. So do I have to specifically select something on any portal to go for that? or? Nope. In fact, unless you are actually um, admitted to the cohort program, you'll never even see their courses. Uh, they're not available to you at all. Their courses are enrolled for them by the program because they start and stop at the same time. So mm -hmm. if you're in the flex, what you see is available for you. OK, OK, thank you. Yep. And then uh, Shweta. Yeah, hello, ma'am. Um Thanks for hosting the session. Um, my question is regarding the internship. I was just looking at the course planning. Um, where exactly does the internship um, window fit in? And is it um, um, full-time internship or do we do it along with um, the rest of the classes? So I'll take the first part first. Where does it fit in? You have to complete two long semesters. So for virtually everyone on this call, it will be next summer. So you'll have to complete fall and then spring before you're eligible to do the internship. You can then do it at any time after that. So you can do one in summer. You could do one the following fall. You're not just limited to summer internships here at UT Dallas. Do you do them at the same time you're doing classes? That's up to you. Summer, usually students will do only the internship, although some people are picking up the internship in an online class um, in the fall. Um, it's not uncommon to see them take the internship and then classes. It depends on where the internship is, where you are relative to graduation and a bunch of other factors. So typically it ends up, I work with students to see what makes sense in terms of their internship offer, uh, what the employer wants, what the student wants, what they have left to complete. And so we work through all of that um, once it's internship go time. OK, so that um, typically means uh, the the timeline of the program would extend if say you're, if I'm doing an internship for say three to four months, I'm guessing. It, again, it, it's going to depend. I mean, so if you're doing a Dallas internship and you're taking you're still taking courses, um, it, it may not change your graduation date at all. It really comes down to how many hours you're working for the employer. Um, so if you're working full time for the employer, say, and it's a fall semester and it's in Dallas, then what's likely to happen is it's probably going to be the internship, maybe two classes, and then maybe you pick up an extra class the following spring and still graduate on time. So it's really a function of how you move things around through your timeline, whether you pick up summer classes or not. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can move them around so that you can still uh, you still graduate on time. Some people choose to prolong their graduation because they're wanting to spread out the classes while they work their internship. It's particularly the case if the internship looks like it will roll into full time employment after graduation. But again, that's all stuff that I talk with students about um, after they've typically after you've completed your your long semesters. OK, OK, got it. That uh, answers yep. my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Matt. Yes. And there's some um, tracks, like for example, financial analysis. There is a course that is in six three nine eight finance internship. So, mm -hmm. is it the internship that is the internships that students do, or is it something like on campus? 
No, that is the internship that students do. And to enroll in that class, you can't do it yourself anyway. So once you get your internship offer, it actually goes into Galaxy Orion for processing. As part of the processing, it comes to me and you get to and they get, then you get enrolled in that class by graduate advising. So you never actually enroll in that class uh, yourself. Um, so so that class it's in the list, but realize that that is the actual class that you sign up for. You have a maximum of three hours uh, credit hours of internship. So essentially, if you have time until you graduate, you want to take less than three hours, um, even if you're eligible for more. The idea is you want to draw out those internship hours as long as you can. And then in the last semester, when you get ready to graduate, you burn the remaining hours. And usually the follow up is what if I don't have an internship or it's not extended? And again, these are things that get worked out with with me actually um, prior to graduation so we can make sure you hit your graduation date um, and, and, and accomplish your goals. So. So that's how that part works. If I get an internship, but I do not want to count that internship as my credits. I can do that. So taking the internship is completely up to you. So you'll get the internship offer. If you get a better offer, you take a different internship. Um, we don't pick the internships for you. You find the internships and bring them uh, in for processing. And now, having said that, there's a lot of events that go on. There's uh, career fairs, there's mock interviews, there's speakers that come to campus, um, the Career Management Center resources, Handshake and the rest of it um, to help you with that search. Uh, but you select the internship. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm fine, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, actually, uh, when I saw the credit hours in the graduate catalog, uh, it was written you are required to take minimum 36 hours. So is it possible to take more credit hours uh, if you want to? Yes, it is. There's a couple of ways to do that. It's a little bit. Um, you have to plan your courses a little bit. So what ends up happening is you pick up those extra courses in the last semester. So if you plan your courses, so let's say you take. Three in the fall, three in the spring. Um, Maybe you take, you know, three the following, okay. yeah, four the following fall, then you'd only have two in that final semester. So it, it is possible to graduate with more than 36 credit hours. I generally tell people if you're going to do that or you're thinking about doing that, then think about how many hours you want to take or how many classes or what area they're in. UTD makes double degrees very attractive. It's all the hours for the first degree and then 19 for the second degree if it's an MS uh, degree. That may be attractive for some students, uh, but there's no reason to add the de second degree right away. You can add that, you know, after you start the program and, and you get settled in a bit. So we can add a second degree if you if you want to. For example, if I'm pursuing MSF and if I want to pursue MSBA also, simultaneously, so it is possible to add a second degree to it, it is. So what would happen is um, you would add the degree. You need to meet their requirements for admission, so they have to agree to admit you to their degree. Uh, so that's the part, but you don't have to pay an application fee. All your documents are there, so the processing is usually pretty quick. Uh, I generally for those I tell students that they should sit down with advising and work through the, the double degree plan because I know what we will do for Finn, but I don't know what Buon would do for business analytics. So what they accept and don't accept and advising knows that kind of information. And then that way you can map out the, the two degrees. But yes, it's very attractive to do two MSs or an MS and an MBA actually. Uh, here at UTD. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I know I think Penny is is working on um, some of these replies, but let me see if there's any other questions for for me, and then I'll help her with the with the um, chat questions. I'll read some of these since uh, I don't know how much the chat will show up. I, I already answered the 
the, the, the questions. I think there's oh, one I student. I'm not sure you, you have already answered this question. It's uh, a yeah. Nat Nathani. This is the, the name I can see. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I, I think I grabbed that one. Let me just do a quick scan of these questions in here just to see if they're because um, some of these look kind of general purpose, so I want to make sure I, I kind of mention them. Um, that's that one. So there was a question about virtual classes this semester. There are some online classes. Those classes are completely online. They are completely asynchronous. Um, they're identifiable from the OW extension. So if you see OW and there's no room, um, any of those those kinds of things, it says no meeting room, those are fully asynchronous online. If you're an international student, there are usually limits to how many online classes you can take versus in person. Traditionally, it's been only one online class. I do not know if that will change for um, fall of 2022. They had changed that a bit for COVID, but I don't know whether what that's going to be. Um, if we register now, it is uh, early registration and the tuition is July 27th. So yes, the answer to that is yes and yes. And yes, Penny's exactly right. Make sure you follow the requirements for the visa status. Always stay in status. Scholarships, um, I think the last day for scholarship applications is May 1. They do check every couple of weeks. Uh, they skim the pool and give it to the top students in the pool um, for that period of time. Um, then at the end, once they reach that deadline, they deploy or release the last of the funds. So, um, and it's a separate application for scholarships from uh, admissions. On the last date to submit the I-20, uh, I, yeah, this is the iComet portal. And then, of course, Penny has about the course book for the past yeah. syllabi. And we probably have a couple of other ones. Let's see. So yeah, if you're an F1 student, traditionally it's been one online class. On the summer intake, you'll want to also double check about the online classes because they made some exceptions for COVID during COVID times, but I know that they've been uh, moving back to that one course limit. Um, and I, if you're on campus and you're an inter, if you're an international student, I know you do need to be on campus at, uh, for the starting semester. Oh, I think they ask for the social media group. Yeah, I'll let and you handle that part. <laughs> we right now we only have Discord, and I know some of the students ask me ask me if you have WhatsApp. So uh, in here, if someone, some one of you, one of you can create a WhatsApp link right now, if possible, then you can create one and then you share with all the uh, participants over here, if possible. Or if any one of you want to be volunteer to create one and then send me the link after this uh, webinar and then I can share the WhatsApp link to all the um, students, if possible. Oh, I think someone created one. I think See, they're so speedy. Great. Yeah, so that's the WhatsApp group for all of you. And then you may use this one to join and then you may communicate with each other after our webinar. Um, the question about practical projects we can do along with our courses. There are a number of courses that do that. Usually you can identify them through the course description um, on Coursebook. Uh, but again, if you have questions about the practical courses, um, there's a number of them that do cases. So the modeling for valuation is a case based class. So is the merger class. So these are all actually taking and applying uh, the knowledge to specific situations. So they're very practical. Same thing with private equity. Uh, the 6364 class, which is part of financial analysis, they also do a very practical approach. They use stock track and do the trading with the portfolios. So there are classes that do that. Um, when you get to where you can start selecting those electives, I can can help you out with that. Yes. Uh, OK, so yeah, the difference uh, between. 
Yeah, intermediate finance 3331 and 6330. Um, so our, so a three 3000 level class is undergraduate. Um, you should not take undergraduate classes ever because they will not count towards your grad degree and you'll be paying grad prices for an undergrad class. So don't take those. Classes you want should be 6000 level. Uh, those are the graduate classes um, and the intermediate and uh, you can't do intermediate finance at the grad level until you've completed finance 6301. The intermediate finance class is 6350. Um, and it's an elective. All right, so let me see if there's other questions. Ma'am? Yes. You just said that inter intermediate financial accounting doesn't need any sort of prerequisites. And that was me who asked that can I register for like 3331 right. about 6000? Yes, yeah, so you can actually register. You should be able to actually register for the intermediate accounting 6330 yourself. That is a graduate level accounting course. Um, you know, I do recommend if you've never ever done any accounting in your life, you probably don't want intermediate financial accounting. Can you do it? They'll let you do it. Should you do it? You probably shouldn't. So if you've never ever done accounting, you should do accounting 6301 or 6305. Again, 6305 is a combination of managerial and financial accounting. They're different. Managerial accounting is internal to the company. Financial accounting is those external financial statements. So if you don't know the difference, then you probably want 6305. Um, but it doesn't matter from the program standpoint. We just want to make sure that you have some exposure to the financial statements and either of any of those three classes will actually do the trick. So on document questions, you know, what official documents do we need? Those documents are actually processed and handled by admissions. And so they're going to be the ones that can tell you what is an adequate document. Um, and Penny's got that in there. Um, and they're the ones, they and ISSO are really the ones that can help with things like the I-20s and the documents and official document types of questions uh, more than we can. Uh, because they know what they're willing to accept and they're the ones who put those parameters in place. And thank you, Penny. Well, hopefully we have gotten to all of your questions. If you think of additional ones, again, you're welcome to email us. Um, more. Yes. I think there's one more question. Is education no, uh, education no sanction letter enough to get an I-20? show banners i have I, no clue <laughs> absolutely the no same clue. to me so <laughs> i can go know, financial aid office right either financial aid or isso is going to be the one to have to help with this because um since it's an i-20 i guess i would start with isso um, the international student uh, services organization but those are questions for outside of us actually so i'm sorry right, we so can't really help with that so for I I uh, I think for this one, if you have already applied your I twenty through your I comet portal, you can through uh through that portal send a message, and then ask check with the advisor. So probably you can send this message to to them within the I comet portal. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining us today um, and um, one, answering. I one question. Yes, sure. Yeah. So uh, in my undergraduate degree, I did econometrics and I noticed there was a course called analytics for finance and mm -hmm. I think it's pretty much econometrics as well. Uh, but based on seeing the course catalog, um, I don't see any further courses in econometrics. So if I want to waiver it off, do I get to choose a free elective? Instead of a higher no, <laughs> you would have to choose a fin course if you got it waived. Okay. Um, what would end up happening is so to 
for finance 6307, which is that mathematical methods that's a hybrid of finance and statistics. Uh, we'll talk about, I know, I know you're not asking about that one, but give me a moment. I'm going to get to that one because it's going to answer that question. That course requires an exam um, to, to get a waiver. The only thing you can get if you file the waiver form is a request to take an exam. Um, it would be the same with Finance 6318. It will not be an automatic waiver. You would need to take a waiver exam um, before that would be considered, and it would be two undergrad courses in order to be considered for the waiver of the econometrics course because it uses R, and again, it's using financial data, so it's not exactly, um, it's, not, it's not just econometrics. I just refer to it that way because it's the bulk of what they do. So just keep in mind that for some of these courses to get a waiver, it may be more than just putting in the request. Okay, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you again for joining us. If you have other questions, please let us know, and we look forward to seeing you on campus over summer or fall.